All right, who are we kidding? This car is going to gap the dark horse. Listen to this. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right, so look, Jake's out there filming. You know, yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't know I'm talking shit, but listen, that dark horse is getting gapped every day of the week, okay? And uh, yeah, you guys with the Gen 1, Gen 2 Tune Coyotes, you're, you're gapping dark horses. And I, I do, Jake actually stalled his car, which is bizarre. We were driving and uh, homie stalled it. And I, I didn't even know you could do that, but listen, he is a dark horse owner, so it doesn't surprise me anymore because uh, it's just kind of the way it rolls and I can't see a damn thing. Traffic you today, huh? Woo! <laughs> How's it feel? Feels good. Definitely not like fast, fast, but I know it's I fun fast, over. though, you know? Yeah. It's fun fast. Hey, what's good everyone? Happy Friday. Hope you all had a good work week. Just want to put this little reminder out before we jump into today's video that our East Coast Mustang Tour Round 2 is starting next week on November 4th. Our first location is here in Richmond, Virginia, and then we are heading to Charlotte, North Carolina at Power Curve. From North Carolina, we're going to be going down to Atlanta, Georgia and hosting a meet with It's Just a Six and Justin with Atlanta Custom Wraps. After the Atlanta meet, we're going to head to Tail of the Dragon and we may throw a little pop-up meet there. From Tail of the Dragon, we are going to be cruising to Nashville. Tennessee to wrap it up on November 11th as you can see right there on the screen We are very excited to hit the road again and most importantly to meet a lot of you all So make sure you come on out if you can bring your boys bring your fam It's gonna be an awesome time and we will have that limited edition East Coast Mustang tour shirt on hand $25 cash or cash app So make sure you come out to the meet snag one if you want us to sign them and stuff so you can collect them We can do that too much love fam. Hope you have a blessed weekend and let's go ahead and get on with today's video what is going on, DVP squad? Welcome back to the channel for another video. Appreciate y'all tapping in. And what, what, what do you got going on, dude? Yeah, Shelby, man. Apollo, e-bike, meatball. But boys, today's the day, man. You probably saw Monday's video. We uh, we traveled from Richmond, we came to Maryland. Jake's uh, Jake got the call that the dark horse was here, and you know he just unwrapped it on his channel. Legit had all the rappers on it and stuff. Did a little ASMR action, and woo! Look at these two, dude freaking Mach 1 handling and a dark horse handling pack and that's what today's video is about because your boy being a Mach 1 owner uh, always wanting a Mach 1 and just you know Clay gave me the, the best deal ever on a handling pack grabber blue so Clay thank you so much but you know we turned that dream into a reality and now Jake has his Oxford white dark horse handling pack which we're gonna drive today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about both and you know me being a Mach 1 owner they caught a lot of flack for releasing this car and I'm just gonna be brutally honest and give you guys a little uh, little review and my outlook on it you guys know I've driven the s650 it was just a GT base though and as you guys know I did order a performance pack s650 which obviously uh, if you caught up with the channel and stuff I did cancel due to buying a house so that is happening so the s650 isn't coming to the channel on that end but you know we have a dark horse here we're gonna play with and Easily two of Ford's best 5.0 handling cars that they've ever made. So that's uh, that's exciting. We are gonna jump into the dark horse. We're gonna go for a drive. I'm gonna let you know let you guys take this all in, and uh, you know let's check this out real quick. Look at this. Ford went the extra mile, and they even kept the same key fobs. Which one's the dark horse key? I don't know. Do you guys know which one the dark? Everyone feels slower. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this door is this a Hellcat door? <laughs> Woo, look at this interior though, man. They, uh, they knocked it out of the park with this interior, I will say. At first, I didn't like the screen, but now after well, getting it... We're going to talk about the screen for sure. We're going we're gonna to talk about the screen, but I mean, everything else. You got the steering wheel, the blue stitching. The blue stitching is my favorite. I don't know if you know. I like the color blue. I do too. A little it's, bit. it's pretty gas, but um, this is sick too. I like uh, the shift knob just isn't blue, but it's like this. I don't know. It's like reflective and stuff. Oh, can I forget the Recaros? Hold on. Let me give you guys a look at these real quick. The Recaros are freaking sick, man. They're so clean. Probably one of the coolest designs I've seen, but we're gonna, we're just gonna hop in this and, uh, you know, Mach 1 owner, giving you guys honest opinion on the Dark Horse Handling Pack. And here we go. So this is a normal mode. The track mode sounds relatively good on this, honestly. 
those suckers down. Many of you might know the transmissions in these cars are the exact same. They both have Magna Ride. Now they are going to be tuned differently Magna Ride wise. Uh, they obviously would make improvements on the dark horse here. So uh, we're going to experience that. And uh, overall, we're just going to take it in. Uh, I drove the car a little bit yesterday. It was nighttime. I didn't really get to feel it out much. But uh, that's what we're doing here today. So if you guys are stoked on this, please drop a like up on this video. Subscribe to the channels, man. And the East Coast Mustang Tour, as you guys saw in the beginning, it's going to be sick, dude. Right around the corner. Are you it's ready for Tale of the Dragon? Dude, I cannot wait, this dude. This car and that car, it's going to be insane. It's going to be so much fun. I haven't even did Tale of the Dragon in anything. Me I've never been there. Never, never been to seen... Tennessee. Have I've you been, been to Tennessee? Been oh, yeah, you did for Yodi, Yodi, but yeah. I didn't get to really do too much. I'm going to it. It's going to be sick. And uh, first things first, I think we clicked this little pony. It's in track mode. Is it in track yeah, I mode? The I put the exhaust in track mode. Okay. You want like the whole car in track mode? Let's put it. Let's put it in sport plus. So go mode up there. Easy. Oh yeah. Easy, super easy. Look at that. Just press the mode. Okay. So there's custom, okay. slippery, drag, track, sport. We'll do sport. Dude, the um, just get me. But how do we switch it back into exhaust? So it should already change. No, it's sport sport exhaust on. So what do you mean? Oh, you want to go back? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. How you go back to track exhaust? So just press Mustang. And there might be an easier way to do it, so I don't know. That's not working. So maybe back. Right yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, track exhaust. When I was driving the car yesterday, uh, the one thing in particular that I did notice was the clutch feel. Now this clutch, it has some weight to it, which I'm a huge fan of. If you guys have been watching the channel for some time, you, you would know that about me. I do like a clutch that has good feel, and this one is better than the Mach 1. Now, I don't know what they did to change it up. I don't know if it is different, but I can tell you right now, my clutch is a lot lighter than this, which I don't personally like. But there is a fix, the Steeda Spring, which we're gonna do. Just thought I'd throw that out there. And uh, the other thing is the Tremec in this car, Jake was telling me that Ford focused on making the throws a little shorter. So it does feel a little notchier, but it is smooth though. It's not it's not clunky by any means, but it is different. It feels a lot different. Um, another great thing, foot off the gas. Look at this. Gives you enough juice to get out the driveway. And uh, we're off, boys. Nice and smooth. And honestly, it feels right at home, man. It really does. It feels super good. Uh, still learning and still feeling out the screen thing. I'm not going to go too much into that. That's not what this car is about. This car is about the main raw performance that you're getting from Ford at, you know, a reasonable price. And I know that sounds crazy to many. We're going to go over it in this video. We have both window stickers for the 2022 Handling Pack Mach and the 24 Handling Pack Dark Horse. And stick around for this video and later into this video because I think many of you are actually going to be shocked at that statement. Starting off with this car, one thing in particular I did notice as well is the steering feel is definitely different um it's very very smooth it has like a linear feel to it and it, it honestly feels effortless but with these uh pirelli tires and the magna ride and the adjustable struts and stuff it, i mean this thing this thing handles really well and you know i'm gonna let jake on his pov videos and stuff be the first to rip this car um i just you know i got to give you guys a little feel and oh my god you hear the rocks you, yeah, dude right the mog does the same with those cups okay, just got swallowed up by a rock. <laughs> so it will throw rocks. Uh, PPF. I was we telling him it's. Gravel on the road, so yeah. That is crazy. Factory exhaust, track mode. It's. I mean, you can't complain about it. You really can't. Um, I don't know how much it differs from the mocks. I know the mocks sounded pretty decent, and Jake actually has an X pipe that's going on this very soon, and that alone completely changes the car drastically. But, um, man, this thing is a smooth freaking Cadillac right now, dude. And you got your gadgets, you got your tech, and you got a car that just drives super, super smooth. And these Pirellis, world of a difference drive-wise from the Cup 2s. I can say that. And uh, the steering feel, it is, it's, it's weird because it is so, so easy. Like, it, it's, it's linear feeling, but it is aggressive at the same time. It's a very odd feeling. You have to feel it in order to like describe it i can't like easy turning yeah but it feels, heavy at, but it feels heavy at the same time but it's very like it just it, it takes very little effort it gives like an old school feel but still modern yeah time. but it feels really good and then of course you have the awesome auto rev matching that's a that's a joy honestly i know a lot of people including myself at first were little hesitant on it i think jake is right now he's still learning it feeling it out it's one of those things that it's just once it becomes second nature it's actually really awesome i just don't like not seeing yeah no, this that shit sketches me out yeah so that's the only part i would say go slow 
they, they clean a lot of this stuff a little bit because just because that metal bridge is like a hit. We're gonna take this nice and easy, boys. This car is brand new. It's not mine. We're gonna respect it, but that don't mean we can we can feel it out. Jesus. Jesus, dude. Yeah, see, and that's Bro, why. Imagine if that ladder came off. Dude. That's Final Destination right there. <laughs> imagine if that dude crossed the double. I would've got medevaced. <laughs> I mean, the car feels so good, man. It, honestly, it feels right at home with the Mach so far. It really does. There's nothing like, I don't know. It, it's, it's a joy to drive. It really is. It's very, very like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, it feels really good. It does. It, you get the comfort, you get the handling. And uh, you know, I, I, we will really make a final judgment that day when we pull the cars over after Tail of the Dragon and we're just sitting there mobbing because we're gonna make sure we capture that trip. That's gonna be one for the books. Especially having these two cars on the Tail of the Dragon, legit doing what they're built for. I, I think that's gonna be a life-changing experience driving-wise for both of us. Uh, we haven't really, you know, I, this thing hasn't seen any hard corners yet. The Mach, I've gotten a little in it here and there but i haven't done its true potential yet so definitely looking forward to that trying to think off the top of my head things that are you know coming from a mach 1 owner that completely catch me off guard and i mean truthfully there's really not much yet there's not there's not much um oh my god <laughs> Got some miles to put on this buddy 134 I know, she's fresh. you got 870 to go <laughs> oh and let's talk about the braking the braking on this thing is definitely better uh, i feel like you can feel those real rear calipers really putting in work with the big front calipers like this thing uh this thing breaks on a dime i can't remember who did it it was either 60 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour but it was, they were showing the braking on this car versus supercars, and this lined up right next to a 458, and it, I doubt it from It was right up there, 99 huh? 99 feet was wow. the exact time, or the exact distance to stop. I forget which one it was, 60 or 100 miles an hour, but they slowed down perfect. We're gonna make a left here. Oh shit, <laughs> I missed the road. It took like a nice little bend, but that person kind of had it. Like butter. Super simple. That thing has so much more in it. These cars are going to speak for themselves once we take them on our trip. I just wanted to jump in it today because, you know, we just took delivery of this thing this weekend. I know he's stoked on it. Uh, he's back in a manual car. Ricky was the last manual he had, and that was a Fox body. Two totally different worlds right now. So uh, I'm anxious to see him grow with this car and really learn this Tremec and have a lot of fun with it. A little traffic -y today, huh? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> How's it feel? Feels good. Definitely not like fast, fast, but I know it's once fun, over, fast though. You know, yeah, it's fun, fast. I think it was uh, I think it starts to cut power around 6k right yeah. now because Ford a lot like makes you do a thousand miles and then it unlocks it. So got to keep that in mind. And you know, he has some driving to do, like I mentioned earlier. But yeah, I think it's still good just to rip on the car just a little bit. I mean, granted, at the end of the day, it's a machine. I think once you start like overheating it to the point where the temps are like exceeding like it's getting hot hot i think that's where it gets bad but i think light rips on it like that oh yeah not really gonna she's gonna be more. good i think that's the best way to break it in everything feels solid as hell she feels good clutch feels really good i love that it does pop a lot it does pop i noticed that Dude, wait until you'll be able to rev this out. I, I think I was shifting at six on that. Do the X-Pipe, yeah. It's Revving this out is gonna be sick. We're gonna get Jake strapped up with this GoPro. Let him drive us back. But take a look at this beauty, man. Looks so freaking good. Let's get Jake to rip it. Give her a little feel and uh, we're gonna see how it feels from the passenger oh, you, seat. You can smell it cooking. 
feel weird. I feel like my right eye just shut a little bit <laughs> just from putting that on. I don't know why. We're out. Yes, sir. I'm going to jail. And that was fifth and neutral. What an idiot. Definitely cutting that out. First, back roads rip in the dark horse. Not gonna go super crazy. Still, car's brand new, 138 miles on it, and of course, we get stuck behind a magic school bus. But car feels good. I love the throttle response, the shifting, getting used to the trend make, fourth gear, back down to third, right in second. It's super, super easy ease the clutch out and i mean this thing feels good it's got some power to it i mean granted it's still new hasn't fully opened it up but i just love the gauges and how everything looks that camaro's ballsy up there he went around in his magic school bus dude i just want to send it right now you know i was a big fan of the autos i love the dct um we really can't do much right now. DCT is just insane. I couldn't imagine this car, the DCT. I've always wanted something to like compete against the C8, and this actually does beat the C8 around a lot of tracks. It does. That's actually crazy. Yeah, because you know how capable the C8 was, and I mean, at high speeds, this car, Ford did it so well. Like, this is the best coupe I've ever been in. Ooh, Hear that pop? He sounds good. So smooth. It's so man. smooth. Like everyone's probably like, oh, he only has one hand on the wheel. Like, dude, I'm, I can like two finger this thing. Maybe you should go for four, but four fingers, maybe a pinky. This might be the best coupe I've ever driven. Sixty some miles an hour. Ford's gonna incriminate myself. Speed limit's right there below the actual mile an hour. Yeah. Dude, it it's, so it's well. dude. I could push it so much I more. Know. Is this where I flew with the mom? Yes, the same this road. Turn that you shit no, that was on. that turn. Oh, because right. remember I said the bridge comes yeah, here. We were screaming through here. Yeah, I, I took about nine months. Wow. It's only got 143 miles on it. We're trying to break it in good. Can I drive it? No. <laughs> And as far as the dark horse with the handling pack, um, you know, obviously I want to say it comes with like the little wheel well fender lips, the front lip, the spoiler, I believe is different. These cars with the handling pack, the Magna Ride is tuned specific for that option. That's where, you know, the bread and butter comes with the handling differences between the two. Um, when we were at Barrett Jackson, you know, we briefly talked over it a little bit and they mentioned that's like the one crucial thing that differs from base and the handling pack is that different tune in the Magna Ride. Let's jump inside the interior of the mock real quick. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this car. You guys have seen it if you're, you know, been watching the channel and stuff, but obviously Tremec six speed manual transmission. I have been uh, falling in love with that. When it comes to the clutch in the car, it is a factory twin disc, which I'm a big fan of. It, it really does feel good, the engagement and, you know, with the no lift shift feature and stuff, which the Dark Horse has as well. It, it's overall a really good driving experience. And, you know, a lot of people uh, will say that like, oh, this is just a parts car of a GT. And to be honest, like it's so far from that because I've driven everything under the sun and w normal GTs, like, don't get me wrong. They're badass. They're nice, but they are very different from the, the extra, uh, oil cooler. You have the, what the diff cooler, you got the, you got the yeah. Um, a lot of bracing, a lot more extra bracing. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that's different. There's a lot of stuff that's different. This is the first time I've seen an Oxford white dark horse. And I must say, I think it's the color to get. Uh, we've seen what colors we've seen the vapor. Race the vapor is good. Vapor blue. I like the red, but Amber. I haven't, I haven't seen the grabber yet. Yeah, the grabber, I want to see the, the grabber. grabber and the white were the last two ones we haven't the seen. The white is crazy though. I will, I will admit as far as interior stuff, you guys have been here before. Uh, we test drove the S650 and stuff. And as far as looks, other than the Recaros, it's essentially the same. Um, but you know, the little details like the blue stitching, the blue shift knob, like it really is a nice premium feel. But let's talk about the driving experience. First thoughts with hopping in the dark horse yesterday. The car feels amazing. I was driving it, it, it it's very user friendly. Um, you guys saw Romina hopped in the mock the other day and was driving it. And again, she could hop in this car, drive it. It's so, so user friendly. Um, and it feels good, it really does. There's, it's not much that I can complain about. Um, the screens, they're growing on me. 
it's still not my cup of tea exactly, but I can see how a lot of people do love them. Um, the tech and stuff, like we went to go get breakfast this morning. It is dope. Like you have Spotify open, you have all the gauges. And the cool thing I will admit, and I'll give them this, is when you're tracking this car, you can actually pull up every different type of gauge and customize it. You can put up the, you know, the G's that it pulls. You can have your oil temp, your everything displayed right here instead of all of it right there. Like on my car, it's all in that one. So right here on Apollo, we have two window stickers and we'll start off with the Mach 1, all right? So one thing I do have to put out there, this car was not supposed to come with leather Recaros. Um, I've heard of this happening. Uh, it did happen on some of the forums. I did some research because I almost didn't believe Clay when he first told me, but I got the window sticker and I was looking over it and stuff and then I noticed right here, it says Recaro Cloth Sport Seat. And you know, there's leather in there. So I hit him up, I was like, yo, like, why is there leather Recaros in there? And sure as shit, at the time when they were building these cars in 2021, I feel like this is built because it's 2022, right? Um, they uh, supposedly Ford just ran low on supply and if they didn't have cloth Recaros on hand, what do they do to get a car out? They slap in leather. So I got extremely, extremely lucky with that. So I don't know what the price difference would be. Let me see if there's a, if, is there a Recaro? It's not going to show. Yeah, Recaro cloth seats, sixteen fifty. I don't know if it's an upcharge for leather seats, but regardless of that, sixty-five thousand window sticker, right there, sixty-five thousand. Okay, after tax, title, and stuff, you're looking at we'll say seventy flat or so. Now, if we look at the dark horse, and this is probably going to catch a lot of people by surprise, without looking at the price. Remember, we talked. It is a six hundred A equipment package. It is a handling package. handling package right there. It's a $5,000 option That's and personally it's a must. 67.5 and I mean it's 65, 67. And you are getting a little more um, interior wise with this car. Interior. The dealership that Jake works with, um, you know, they, they're always looking out for him. So they did give him the car at sticker, which is the right thing to do in my opinion. And I know with the dark horses, these dealers are out of their mind, man. I was on Facebook looking and stuff. There's, there's legit people trying to sell them for 90 plus. That's insane. And I know he would never pay that for that car, but you know, at the end of the day though, with all you're getting and the Mach one being the last one to be at that price range before these came out, it's no different. It's really not. You're getting the S650. Um, for damn near the same price as this car when it came out. So it caught me by surprise and I figured a lot of you guys probably didn't know that or, you know, believe it, but sticker price, 67.5 for a, for the dark horse you want. The dark horse you want with yep. the packages you want, that's literally not bad at all. It's not. Put the Mach 1 on the track and they put the dark horse on the track. And they beat a lot of cars, they including the one LEs. Yep. So uh, that's pretty, pretty impressive, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was actually shocked when, uh, when I saw the price and everything that it came with, because I personally thinking, you know, just like everybody else on the internet, you think they're all 80 grand. They're not though. They can get up, they can get probably close to nine if you do carbon fiber wheels. If you do like the shebang. Air. Go, no, get. <laughs> I wanted to bring you guys this little video just to introduce the dark horse. You guys are gonna see a lot of this and considering they're both going on a week and a half tour, which you guys should be there. In the description, you'll find all the dates, all the exact times. So make sure you do that. Screenshot it, share it with your friends and stuff. Come out. And again, we do have a shirt dropping. But yes, you're going to see more of this dark horse. We are going to drive the living piss out of these cars. We're hitting Tail of the Dragon before our Nashville meet. I'm excited. I've never been. Jake's never been. And what other Mustangs would you rather have on the Tail of the Dragon? Nothing. Two Tremec handling pack cars is going to be a blast. So content on that coming. You guys saw the driving portion of this video in the dark horse. I did show the couple things I do like more than the mock. Specifically the clutch feel, I do love that. Overall though, Ford did crush it with this vehicle. Um, you know, when tuning's unlocked, that's when it's gonna get really fun because you can do your full bolt on, your E85. And I think right now that's kind of why everybody is poking it because yeah, it is untunable right now. That's the unfortunate part about it. But the market on this car, the S650 alone is going to be gigantic. And I think at some point, chew it, chew it buddy. Was he the one that chewed the Corvette when you I, had it? I didn't confirm. I could not confirm who did it. I don't know. He's looking kind of sus. It had to be him because he ate underneath uh, about three trucks, <laughs> chewed the wiring harnesses. I'm going to stop rambling. We just wanted to have a fun little video, a little comparison. And uh, yeah, it's a dope car. It really is. So if you, if you want to see more of it, get ready. Come on out. And these two are hitting the road soon. So it's going to be a sight to see down the highway. That's for sure. All right. Who are we kidding? This car is going to gap the dark horse. Listen to this. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, so look, Jake's out there filming. You know, yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't know I'm talking shit, but listen, that dark horse is getting gapped every day of the week, okay? And uh, yeah, you guys with the Gen 1, Gen 2, Toon Coyotes, you're, you're gapping dark horses. And I, I do, Jake actually stole his car, which is bizarre. We were driving and uh, homie stalled it. And I, pff, I didn't even know you could do that, but listen, he is a dark horse owner, so it doesn't surprise me anymore because uh, it's just kind of the way it rolls and I can't see a damn thing. Hey, oh! As I was saying, you know, Mach 1. Mach 1 for life, baby. Mach 1 for freaking life. Yeah, I was just I was just telling him like how the dark horse like it's pretty quick. It's gonna gap a lot of stuff. I'm gonna fuck you yeah, up. Yeah, do that, meatball attack him. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you talking talk, shit? <laughs> talking shit about my dad? Nah, hey, these are gonna look so sick though. Oh my god. Imagine going down the highway and you see these two rolling. I pee them. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I did get hit by U-Haul. U-Haul egg. Uh, no, no, egg no. Egg Dude, he's a horny little bastard. He likes you. Is he pissing? I'll give you rubs. No, that's what you want, you little shit. You just want rubs. He's a big teddy bear. Yeah, he is. No, no jumping, bro. No jumping. No jumping. Appreciate y'all tapping into the video today, man. If y'all would, please go run up Wednesday's video. I feel like that video has been slept on. Absolute heater. You guys are going to love it. The Mach 1's first race. Didn't go too well, but hey, we still ran it. Y'all have a blessed weekend. We'll catch you Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, for another video. Deuces, fam.